So let's see here, getting the live set up here. All right. First Samuel 18 to 22? No. Nah. <laughs> Chapter 20, 18 to 42. All right, we're back, everyone. Uh, Brother Joshua is going to be reading 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 18 to 42. I'll get the screen up for you guys so you can follow along. I don't know why they start All right. chapter. Okay. Um, so starting in verse 18. So, so let's see here. All right, First Samuel 20, um, verse 18. And Jonathan said, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you will be inquired about, because your seat will be observed as vacant. And you shall stay three days and watch an opportunity, and shall come to your place where you may hide yourself in the day of your business, and you shall wait by the stone Ezel. And I will shoot three arrows, aiming them at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad saying, go, find me the arrow. If I should expressly say to the lad, the arrow is here. And on this side of you, take it. Then come, for it is well with you. And there is no reason to who it lives. But if I should say thus to the young man, the arrow is on that side of you and beyond, go, for Yahuwah has sent you away. And as for the word which you and I have spoken, behold, Yahuwah is witness between me and you forever. So Daoud hid himself in the field, and the new month arrived, and the king came to the table to eat. And he sat upon his seat, as in former times, even on his seat by the wall. And he went up, uh, and he went before Jonathan, and Abner sat on one side of Shaul, but Daoud's place was empty. And Shaul, uh, Shaul said nothing on that day, for he said, It seems to have fallen out that he is not clean, because he has not purified himself. And it came to pass on the next day, on the second day of the month, that Daoud's place was empty, and Shaul said to Jonathan and his son, Why has not the son of Yesi attended both yesterday and today at the table? Um, I have to stop right there and mention something. Um, there's, uh, there's a teaching, a doctrine that goes around that says that, because um, he's saying he, he hasn't come uh, because he is not clean, um, but then on the next day um, is when he talks to Shaul, so it only seems to point to you only really need one day to become clean. Um, and there's a doctrine that's going around that saying that uh, you can be unclean by simply um, being oppressed by an unclean spirit, but obviously sometimes it takes longer to get rid of a spirit than uh, just a single day. Um, so if, in this instance, if it only takes a, a single day to, to cleanse yourself, um, never mind, I'll touch on that another time because um, something else was coming to mind. Um, scratch that, disregard everything I said. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I need a little I'm trying to figure out what was the purpose of that verse, though. I'm trying to wonder if that was a tradition they did for the new moon where they're not supposed to be ceremoniously unclean or whatever i'm kind of curious of why he's mentioning that just in general of the of the ceremonial uncleanness i wonder if uh if at that time they had some interesting traditions about the new moon because i know some people even there's doctrines going around that you can't be unclean ritually for the sabbath um that it's a ceremony that doesn't make any sense though because you have days that you have some types of uncleanness that takes longer to clean than just a day yeah that's what i'm trying to figure out why this verse is even mentioning the uncleanness there must be some context we're missing here because it's the verse of itself is kind of like out of place it's like why why is it that specific about his uncleanness i don't know that's something i want more into why it's mentioning that why it's important to mention that he, he's unclean so he's unclean he's not eating with the king uh I don't know. Some, something culturally is there we're, we're just not getting it all right so um, 28 and jonathan answered shaul and said to him daoud asked permission of me to go to bethlehem his city 
And he said, let me go, I pray, for we have a family offering in the city, and my brothers have sent for me. And now if I have found favor in your eyes, I will even go over and see my brothers. Therefore, he is not present at the table of the king. And Shaul was exceedingly angry with Jonathan and said to him, you son of a traitorous woman, for do I not know that you are an accomplice of the son of Yeshi to yourself and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Yeshi lives upon the earth, your kingdom shall not be established. Now then send and take the young man, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Shaul, Why is he to die? What has he done? And Shaul lifted up his spear against Jonathan to kill him. So Jonathan knew that this evil was determined on by his father to kill Daud. And Jonathan sprang up from the table in great anger and did not eat bread on the second day of the month, for he grieved bitterly for Daud, because his father determined against him. And morning came, and Jonathan went out to the field, as he appointed to do for a signal to Daoud, and a little boy with him. He said to the boy, Run, find me the arrows which I shoot. And the boy ran, and Jonathan shot an arrow and sent it beyond him. And the boy came to the place where the arrow was, which Jonathan shot, and Jonathan cried out after the lad and said, The arrow is on the side of you and beyond you. And Jonathan cried out after his boy saying make haste and do not delay and Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and brought the arrows to his master and the boy knew nothing only Jonathan and Daud knew and Jonathan gave his weapons to his boy and said to the boy go enter into the city when the lad went in then Daud arose from the stone Izel and fell upon his face and bowed to him three times and they kissed each other and wept for each other for a great while and Jonathan said to Daud, Go in Shalom, and as we have both sworn in the name of Yahuwah, saying, Yahuwah shall be witness between me and you, and between my seed and your seed forever. And Daud arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. And that it. I want to see what that word is. L means. But yeah, that was the end of, uh, end of the reading. See your beasts three times. Okay, so the beasts that would be the cultural idea of like reverencing someone by bowing to them, um, which obviously David's the king, so that makes perfect sense. Um, and again, I, I know certain people that are trying to find excuses for the homosexual lifestyle. I know people are going to try to use this verse here. They're going to take it, take it out of context. They're going to be like, oh, see, they kissed. No, they were not homosexuals, right? I, I know uh -huh. I've seen certain certain um, you know, denominations out there that will use this. And I'm sorry, no, that's taking it way out of context, way out of context. The, 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 what we have to understand culturally, even sons and fathers – um, even in Italy, by the way, I'm Italian. You're okay, Italian, I'm, I'm yes. Roman. Okay, so I know all about this. A son would kiss his father on the cheek. Okay, that doesn't make him gay or make him a homosexual. Okay, so again, we don't understand this because we live in a Greco-Roman um, Western type of society. So we don't. It it's kind of funny. We call ourselves Greco-Roman, but yet we don't understand these type no, of culture yeah. things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny because this is even in Europe they have this concept. So it's not just the mm -hmm. Middle East, um, but it's basically they're just kid. He, he kissed each other on the cheek. That's all. That, that's all. It's no it has nothing to do with sodomy. It has nothing to do with that. I I've seen I've seen so many videos on YouTube where people are trying to make trying to make uh, whatever you want to call gray areas and trying to say that that homosexuality is allowable or whatever. No, it's not. It's not at all. Those are people that clearly have no idea of Yahuwah's character. Mm -hmm. If any mess like that had been going on between these yeah. two, we just read about it. stripped David from his we just We just so read bad. about it. It says it's a hateful thing. It's an abominable thing. So oh, why, if David's man. a king of Israel, king of Yashrael, why would he do an abominable thing? Okay, so obviously there's contextual issues that are not, that are not being understood here. Uh, if someone believes that, if an individual believes that, they're not understanding the context of scripture. It, people would get stoned. For doing such yeah. things in in Yashrael, 
matter of fact, today it's like the problem is our modern society is so sodomite to the point where you know you can do whatever and there's no penalty for it. Um, that, that's how bad America has gotten at this point. But anyway, that that verse there though, uh, I've seen people take completely out of context. I don't know, brother Joshua, if you were next or sister Sadia wanted to mention something. Calm down, mom. I know. I know you. Calm down. No, you don't know. I had to pray about this this week so that I could not be upset about this whole idea. Yeah, I know. I know. I I know. It's it's extreme butchering of scripture. I, I understand how you feel and. I'm just trying to be as politically correct as I yeah, can I know. right now. I understand. It's to, a world we're to uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, way, way taken out of context view that some individuals have. Um, I think, um, but, not only as a culture have we become, not we, but um, culture, the American culture and other cultures, uh, not only have they become so sodomized, but they've also become um i think homophobic is the wrong word but the point where they think that everything is homosexual everything is is gay like if you show too much if you're a man and you show too much um sensitivity or too much um like yep. for instance um you know i know people in the christian walk that would greet literally take the word the, the the new covenant word to greet one another with a set apart kiss when they would hug you and kiss you on the cheek um like you were talking about that still do that to this day because that's what they see in the word um you know this culture would point that out as being homosexual or being gay and weird um you know but that's what scripture says greet each other with a set apart kiss mm -hmm. yeah you know, and the reverencing too is something that we're very foreign to too with the bowing down that that's very foreign you don't see people really doing that anymore but you would do that to kings oh, especially yeah. to kings i think there's even certain things in the torah where i know you're supposed to stand up for an elderly person when they walk in the room mm -hmm. it says rise up before the hoary head yeah. um yeah there's a lot of things in our stupid american culture we don't realize we are so foreign from the Israelite culture and the culture you who have gave to them. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Sister Mar uh, not Marissa, my bad. I keep confusing to Sister Sadia. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, I got a couple points here. Okay, so I am a mother of a son that is uh, confused. And um, and there, now I'm finding out there's many poor families out there that are ashamed. I am not ashamed. I know that Abba's going to get him back. I'm not worried about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. All I'm worried, what I am concerned is um, that, uh, that whatever it takes, whatever it takes, Abba, uh, whatever it takes to bring our children back, homosexuality is not the greatest thing out there. There's a lot. There's lying. There's uh, drugs. There is, uh, you know, um, a lustful life of living. Uh, there's a lot of sin. No sin is greater than the other, other than a blasphemy against the Ruach of death. So we do got to pray. We do got to be uh, sensitive to those parents that are hiding in shame. I just found you. And I, you know what? I'm going to tell you, it is not our thing. We're not the ones that are watching it. We're the parents that should be praying and standing up. The sisters, the brothers, the nieces, the nephews, whatever. We should be praying for them because they have been blinded by such a strong spirit. It is not funny. They're born that way. So that's a, a root of our evil because Yahuwah is not a of confusion when we're born check what you got that yep yeah i think we lost her for a second come back uh -huh. so, anyways i would that we need to stand and pray for our brothers and sisters who are dealing with this uh, of other children um i just keep praying father 
-hmm. remind my son that when we walk, I'm going to say it, as a Christian, we walk. And all the songs are saying, Father, yeah. bring them back. Bring them back. And it, you know, add Yahushua on the shelf. And bring workers to him, to witness to him. Father, that is the gift you gave me. And I'm going to stand and pray for that gift until it's done. Now, now I'll go to the second place. And that's how we should do. And, and, and have compassion on our brothers and sisters that are really dealing with this. Um, because they're shame, but they should not be shame. It just makes you be a more of a warrior. Be a warrior. Put on your garments of war in prayer or get in the war room and just pray and believe Abba is going to do something. And then also, um, when a man, and I have a Persian friend, when they met, or when I met their, came into their family, and they called Yahuwah Yak Yak, um, they, all the men, kids, wife, one on one side, one on the other side. And it was beautiful because there was no embarrassment. There was no, oh, you're, you're gay. Or not. No, it was wholeheartedly a welcoming, a, a love, a friendship that uh, means so much. And as, uh, uh, as David and Jonathan, as they had their friendship, wow, uh, there is a friend that's closer than a, than a brother, a real brother, blood brother. There is, and that, that's a scripture, I think it's in Psalms. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I just love that because I had my girlfriend that died, and uh, she talked about uh, a death that stung me, ooh, she stung me, let me tell you. And I was with her when she, was, when she died. I was right there just min a minute after. And uh, we had made a promise to each other. And our promise was, if one of us dies, don't pray as that. So, of course, when I saw her on the ground, I got her and I picked up her head. And uh, I started to pray, and then I remembered. I had made a covenant with her. And I said, I want to break my covenant. I want to break my covenant so bad. But I said, you know what? No, I made a promise. I had to keep that promise. And so I prayed and I let her go. But I know that, you know, that love. And, yeah. and of course, I got all my brothers and sisters yeah. that I see that love towards. And it, it is a great love. And um, the thought of uh, us going home, any one of us, yeah. would be so hard, so devastating. But we do know that absent from the body is present with you. Mm -hmm. We do know that it is, it, is a, 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 it is a game to die. To live is to live for Yahushua HaMashiach. And that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just want you guys all to know I love you to keep this. I thank you for our relationship that we have. Not not one of you uh, um, is any different. We're, we're one big body here. And yeah. I and I have to say, boy, I am blessed. I don't only have one good friend. I got a basket. I've got a, a spread. And that's all you guys and all my other mystic guys. So beautiful. Um, we are blessed, guys. And uh, one day, we will be having supper together, all of us, and just being so happy that we are in his presence. And we will know the love of a true son that gave his life for us and that he wanted us to be with him forever and ever. And there's a beautiful gift coming with that. So I, you know, I love the fact that we can love one another, that we can be brothers and sisters. And sometimes we don't see eye to eye. Sometimes we might fight. But mm -hmm. loyalty should never leave us. Loyalty should always be there, no matter what. That's how I see it. Okay. Yeah. So before we continue, I just, I, I agree with almost everything Sister Sadia just said. 
I just want to make one minor correction about sins being equal with one another. That's technically not biblical. Um, there's only a handful of sins that are called abominations. Um, and the sin we just talked about is one of them. Um, it is very, very high on the list. Um, and the reason for that poll explains why it's so high on the list, why it's like an abomination is that you're going against your nature the way you who created you. That's why. And I totally agree with Sadia, though, the way we handle it mm-hmm. when witnessing to people that are unfortunately deceived into that type of lifestyle. We need to handle it with care and compassion. Yes. I totally get that. But as far as scripture is concerned about the level of the sin that is, that is one of the highest. That that and um and to be not hypocrites in a way, eating unclean is just as bad. So I want to also talk about that too, because we've always learned about homosexuality being an abomination, but in our upbringing, we kind of are taught to ignore the other abominations. And we're, we're never, ta- you know, we're never taught to, because really eating pork and being a homosexual, it's like this. Sodomy and eating pork are like that. Equal. Yeah. So we don't think of it as that because we're thinking about it. Oh, it's just dietary things. No, to you, who it matters. Yeah. To you, who it matters. It, it both are abominations. So. Just as much as we hate the action of sodomy, we should really be hating the action of eating unclean. We really should. If we're being honest with ourselves and wanting to love our Heavenly Father, it should be like that. Um, that the, the importance of abstaining from eating unclean and abstaining from sodomy really should be about that, to be honest. Um, but there are sins even higher than that in the Brit Hadashah that are even worse than those like the the unforgivable sin right you know there's there's an unforgivable sin even blasphemy of the ruach so there's a sin even above those so i just want to kind of expound on that a little bit and and explain why i don't believe every sin is equal because scripture says differently um i know our our upbringing has taught us we've been taught by others that Oh, well, it, they're all equal. Sin is sin. No, nah, that's not a biblical teaching. It's not at all. Um, and Yahuwah makes it very clear what he hates the most, what he abhors the most, what is detestable the most to him. He detests all sin. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he likes any type of sin, but there are those that are high on the totem pole that are really up there. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, a man laying with a man is one of them. Eating pigs is one of them, or eating any unclean thing is one of them. Um, he hates that. He, excuse me. Ooh, sorry, guys. I had a burp. Um, even touching the carcass of an unclean animal is up there. Um, what does it say in Leviticus 11? You shall hate their carcasses. That's, that's abhor. It's the same word as abhor. So, again, there, there is levels to sin. There is, you know, there's certain lesser sins medium type of sins, very hateful, hateful type of sins that Yahuwah really hates, which he calls an abomination. So just to explain why I don't believe they're all equal from what I've seen in scripture. So just explain on that. Maybe I'll do, we'll do a future teaching on that. So, so you, you even have, um, even in surprisingly, even in Catholicism, they have a idea of that like the seven deadly sins yeah yeah they, they, they have a different levels sins of sin yeah. so that's funny even catholicism gets that right it's kind of uh interesting but that there are higher sins than others um so just to explain that so and i would say even intergendering is a pretty big sin too just Oh, bestiality is another abomination okay that we just read about today abomination not just a regular sin so so breeding with an animal a human breeding with an animal very high list um so sorry about that notification there so just wanted to expound upon that so people don't get the wrong idea that they're all equal but um to me from my idea that's been me ma- a major tradition that we've been brought up with that sins are all equal 
And that's something I had to unlearn coming when Yahuwah, the Almighty, brought me into this walk. I had to unlearn that. That that's not biblical. Um, that's I think that's in a way it's it's a method that certain pastors, teachers use to outreach to the world. Mm-hmm. I think they mean well, but they're fibbing. They're they're like they're like you know they're trying to create like this whole neutral area of sin so people don't feel as bad and and you know i i get where they're coming from but you know the you know we gotta let scripture speak for itself what it literally says so anyway but um i think we're gonna go to matthew 16 i would like um someone who doesn't usually read um and i know uh they i know they probably uh would be willing to read um brother moses would you uh, are you able to read? Would you be able to read Matthew 16? I'm not a strong reader, brother. I mean, I have a house full of kids. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I can read if you'd like. Yes. Yes, Sister Josie, go ahead. Let me just, just give me 